decided to share a turning point in my life. Uh, the date was April 10, 2005. A little background to that is this whole date happened when three months prior, our coal, our, my family's car was stolen out of our driveway. Uh, he served, he was 17 when it happened, and served in the juvenile hall for three months and then probation afterwards. But when he turned 18, our insurance had built in for $18,000. And the logic behind it, what the police station told us, was that if we didn't exist, he thought he wouldn't have to pay eighteen thousand dollars back. So April tenth, two thousand five, I was fifteen. Uh, Three a.m. on Sunday morning, he came into the laundry room window. Upon entering, he cut our phone lines and uh, decided to take our wall's clothing. He uh, pulled our wall's clothes in my parents' bathroom, cut our phone line, and went to our kitchen and found a bigger butcher knife. Um, the next thing I remember was my mom just screaming. She pulled me out of my room. Uh, I, I played baseball at the time, so there was a baseball bat in my room, so I grabbed a baseball bat, got pushed into my father's room. Uh, he was on top of the bed with the kid, just fully naked. Uh, there was blood, and I saw the knife. My dad, he, my dad's a big guy like me, so had him like somewhat under control, but he yelled at me to come take the knife, so I took the knife out of the kid's hand, and there was another baseball bat in my uh, father's closet, so I handed it to him, and we were on each side of the room, and he was in the middle of the bed. At uh, this time I asked him, my dad was like bleeding in some places, so he checked himself out. And I asked the kid if he had came with anyone else, or how many people in the house, and who he was. He told me his name was Arthur Macias, he was 18 years old, and he came, he came to take our lives, and that the Antichrist had told him that we were not supposed to be living anymore. Uh, yeah. Uh, before we knew it, there was like eight police, eight, eight red police uh, officers through the back of the house, guns drawn. Uh, I guess at this time my mom had gotten, we had, I had an infant sister at the time, she was like four months. Uh, four year old brother, and then I had a 16 year old brother and myself, my, my both my parents. But we all got out of the house, uh, the police came, he was taken into custody. <coughs> um, and we made it out alright. Uh, after a year later, we finally went to court for the whole incident. Asked to testify, it took about six months for the court process to go through. Uh, they tried to say he was insane with 12 different doctors, but it never passed. He ended up being 17 years to life for four counts of attempted murder, premeditated murder, breaking in, running, assault, a deadly weapon, just everything they can get for. Um, after that, we found out a couple months later that he had done something in federal prison that he wasn't supposed to do. So now he's currently serving 34 years to life. And he's 20 when he went in. Um, the situation as a whole, as terrible as it was, turned out in a positive. It's brought me and my family closer than I think we ever could have been. Uh, let's just see the light at the end of every bad day. Kind of gives us all hope. You know, there is a reason we all are, are, all are still here. Um, yeah, we just kind of value every second together. In conclusion, um, as time passes, April 10, 2005, will always be a story that me and my family can <coughs> tell. And for such a terrible situation, uh, we're all going to be happy in one.